Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs. Today with a video that I promised, I think two years ago, about comparing tubes with a computerized tube curve tracer. Uh, compare the results uh, with a method I introduced uh, in this video that is related to this one, where I tested three different tubes with the so-called starting current method. I still haven't found a better translation for this and nobody hinted me which one was the original English word. Anyway, what, what, what's that good for? Why are we doing this? Well, as you might know, we're selling uh, these tube experimental kits RT100, which come with uh, four true tubes, a lot of passive components and of course ACD with all the experiments. And we concentrate on experimenting with safe voltages between 12 and 60 volts uh, because you, you will know that tubes usually need anode or plate voltages in the range of uh, 200 to 400 or 500 volts or even higher. But that, that is of course for beginners who are interested to uh, start with the tube property. That's much too dangerous. And we got, sometimes we get complaints from our customers that one or the other of the experiments don't work with the tubes that we supply with the kit. And the reason is, although we take the tubes out of the same box, um, with these low voltages, which are, they are not designed for original and which are outside of their specifications, there's a lot of variation in the amplification and if they are useful, at 12 volt anode voltages. Uh, so that's why we started to select the tubes and we started first with this easy to manage starting current measure. I will give you the link down below in the description where you can uh, see how that works. But let's take this away. But um, what I didn't show you is to compare the results for of these three tubes that are tested in the first video uh, with a real curve tracer. And uh, this little, uh, well, it's not a kit, it's sold as a kit, but now um, this was engineered by Ronald Decker uh, from Holland or from the Netherlands, who is uh, on the one side, he's a professor at uh, a Dutch university and uh, also works, as far as I know, in the Philips uh, Semiconductor Labs, or today NXP. And he is also into the tube hobby. And he constructed um, a circuit where all you need to curve trace tubes uh, is generated all the different voltages, all in all of four or five voltages, the heater voltage, um, the grid voltage, the anode and the screen voltage, they are all generated with mi a microcontroller, a PIC controlled switch mode power supply. You can see all the inductors here and you can see this looks like a prototype and it really is because when I discovered his web page and his blog uh, where he described the development of the Mu Tracer as it is called, I don't know if you can read it, here, the Mu Tracer, created by Ronald Decker. Uh, I instantly recognized the potential of this thing because it is so small and can do everything that tube tracers that are 10 times as big, 10 times as heavy, and 10 times as expensive can do. And uh, I just uh, built the circuit uh, from his, from the circuit diagram he published on his a website before he even thought about selling this as a kit and he was so nice to uh, burn the firmware here uh, onto the PIC. Uh, let's see, it's version 26 or 2.6 from July of 2012. So this was six years ago and uh, in the meantime he has sold many hundreds of these kits. It's in constant development. I think it's now the fifth iteration and it becomes better and better and uh, what's also important, the GUI to control this is absolutely phenomenal. And if you go to his webpage and to the testimonial page and scroll 
completely down, you will find a photo of this, of my one here, just at the very end, because I was the first to build this and the first to give a testimonial. So, um, what do you need to operate this? You just need a single laptop supply between 18 and 24 volts, and I think every one of us has one or more of these as spare parts. What else do you need? A serial connection to your PC. If you don't have a genuine RS-232 interface on your PC, uh, you know you can use one of these USB to serial converters. Most of them work, some don't. Buy not the cheapest one, but one with an FTDI chip, which is guaranteed to work. And you can see here this uh, panel. Because I had limited space, uh, I couldn't use 4mm banana jacks, but I choose uh, these 2mm banana miniature jacks. And they're very nice. We sell uh, cables, plugs and sockets or jacks in our shop uh, because they are really, really nice if you're, uh, if, if you're on a budget concerning the space you have on your front panel. And uh, you can see uh, there is a numbering from, uh, how did I do it, from 10 going down to 1. That's the numbering of the pins of the tube socket and you can see I built a little adapter which has the five of the most used tube sockets Pico, Magnovel, Octo, Novel and Rimlock and internally pin one of each and pin two etc they are all connected in parallel but you need some ferrite beads um, so that they don't start to oscillate due to the heavy cabling here and you just plug this in and can test most of the tubes available. Don't worry, uh, there's no high voltage at the moment uh, turned on. This thing it can go up to 400 volts. Uh, if there is high voltage, it's controlled from the PC, then this red light here would have been turned on. Uh, this little light bulb here is simply to show me that the heater voltage is on to have an independent control. And so if you plug this in into this special DIN connector, uh, that's all you need. Plus a PC and that's it. And now let's take a look at the... Uh, we, anyway, we have to wait, as you will know, for a minute until the tube here has heated up again. We just take a look at the GUI and we start directly with measuring this pentode here, a 6J2, that's a Chinese uh, tube, similar to the 6J1 and the EF95 from Europe. So here we are at the GUI. Uh, I can't explain all the features. Um, I'll just explain uh, what I've set it to. Um, we're measuring now with a constant heater voltage of course we're measuring the anode current versus the grid voltage going from minus 5 volt to 0 volts if you're not into tubes the only thing you have to know the characteristic curves are exactly the same as an n-channel JFET. That's why we have a negative grid voltage. With a JFET it would be the gate voltage and which only goes up to a maximum of zero volts where we have the maximum current. And we have a second stepping variable. This time we have connected the anode and the screen so VA is equal to VS and we step it through 12 volts 24 volts, 48 volts and 60 volts. So we all in all get four curves for four different anode voltages starting with the lowest with 12 volts. Here we have the heater voltage 6.3 volts. The ranging is auto range so you will see that here the scale here changes dynamically when we record the curve. All the rest of the settings they are um, not important just to understand it and now we go to measure curve and you can see the first curve starting now with 12 volt anode voltages of course we have a little bit noise at such low currents and we can see at zero volts we got 
0.25 milliamps and now the second curve is starting with 24 volts in a different color now it's already the third curve with 48 volts and you can see the higher the anode voltage becomes of course the higher the current becomes that we measure here now that was it all in all four curves we have with uh, 60 volts which is the largest voltage that is can still be considered as safe we get 5 milliamps maximum car current at 0 volts gate voltage and you can see how similar these curves look to a an n channel jfet so let's remember one thing what we want to know is the anode current here with the lowest anode voltage of 12 volts and it's about we can do it again it was 0.25 and you can see beautifully the auto ranging function when the second curve starts so it was around 0.25 milliamps and when the second curve comes you can see the scale is automatically changed so really nice okay let's remember this was the worst tube we had in our first video and it now measures with 0.25 milliamps anode current with 12 volt anode voltage and a maximum at 60 volts we get let's remember this a little bit above 5 milliamps now let's change the tube back again and let's take the one with the starting current in the mid-range and we have to wait of course for a minute until it heats up and let's measure this one so we're starting again with 12 volts anode or plate voltage and now we have three times the current instead of 0.25 we have 0.2 we have 0.75 milliamps so clearly at 12 volts we also see a difference here in the characteristic curves let's see what the maximum current is at 60 volts anode voltage and this is nearly the same this time a little bit below 5 volts so the difference is not so much with the higher anode voltages it's here at the very low anode voltages there the difference becomes really great so let's measure the third one again we have to wait for a minute to heat up so the third tube uh, had the highest starting current and it should give at 12 volts also what we expect is also the highest anode current at 12 volts so let's see it's nearly the same 0.75 milliamps at 12 volts um, so the difference is mostly when we have very low starting currents um, the first tube uh, was much lower in starting current and we could see it also was much lower in the anode current at the low voltages of 12 and 24 volts but they all level out if you go to 60 volts you can't see, you nearly can't see any difference they are all around 5 millivolts and now for comparison let's just go to the really high voltages let's still take 120 and 240 volts and let's remeasure the same tube 
and you will see that at 240 volts the anode current will really kind of explode because that's where the tubes was designed for or were designed for in this case working with anode voltages between 250 and 400 volts now oh, we're at 40 volts now comes 60 volts next is 120 and you can see here also that at much lower negative grid voltages uh, the current already starts and here we were already at 12 milliamps and now we are at, at it has also become much more linear here everything <laughs> you ever read about uh, triodes is here verified in, in the here how, see how linear this has become and it now goes up to 35 milliamps anode current but it, we could see it also works at 12 volts so I'm always again fascinated when I work with the mu tracer it's really for me it's like magic how the curves build up if you have made all the connections the right way and that, that the curves are really textbook like so that was it for today I hope you liked it just as much as I did in the future I don't know when I will make a lot more tube videos which I also promised two and a half years ago just to uh, go through every single experiment uh, that we described with our tube experimental kit RT100 but as always it's always a matter of when I find the time so anyway thanks for watching until next time Bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs, and you can support me on Patreon if you liked this video and if you uh, found it interesting.